of it, yeah. Okay, we are live and recording. Yay, at the same time. <laughs> Yay, Friday Night Feels. <laughs> um, welcome, everyone. I am so excited tonight. Um, and I'm just so excited to be here. So let's get rocking and rolling. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know me, I am licensed mental health counselor and certified life coach, Patrick Manette. And Friday Night Feels is a show that created almost two years ago that focuses on a variety of wellness related issues, such as mental health, addiction, health concerns, stress management, relationships, mindfulness, and much more. The focus of the show is to create connection during difficult times and be able to talk about issues that affect us all and how to be the healthiest versions of ourselves that we can be. Each show, I invite different guests to join me. And if you are live on the Facebook, you're able to ask questions as well. And tonight, one of the areas that someone had suggested that uh, we focus on on Friday Night Feels is really starting to talk about people's lives when they hit 50 and above. And so I reached out to different, different groups and everything because I thought it was a topic that I, I don't know enough about. And so I put out the feelers and I had the honor of meeting Julie Tromley and Tina Fumo who are joining me tonight. And I'm just gonna share a little bit of their background so you can get to know them. So Julie Tromley uh, is left a 25 year corporate career that was affecting her health mentally and physically. A year prior, she applied for a different corporate job she thought she would give her, that would give her a way out, but that job didn't pan out. Turns out it was the best thing that ever happened to her because Julie posted inside a Facebook group that she was disappointed, frustrated, feeling stuck, and someone suggested she start her own business. That one idea was just the spark that she needed. Julie started Googling information on starting her own business. That was September of 2019. And by mid-March of 2020, she gave her two weeks notice and left corporate for good. Fast forward to now, and Julie's been in business for herself full-time, just shy of two years. She just celebrated her 54th birthday. Yay, happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> and upon reflection of where she's been and how far she's come, realized she's finally doing what she wanted to do when she grew up. Julie, Trumbly, Julie is a certified entreport ex expert and tech virtual assistant and owner of Tackle Your To-Do. I love Oh, that's so much. I can't even handle this. She supports coaches, trainers, speakers, and authors who are overwhelmed or just getting by with their use of entreport. So Julie, welcome to Friday Night Feels. Well, thank you for having me, Patrick. I'm excited to share more of my journey with everybody and, you know, just enlighten them on how great it is to be over 50 and what you can do with <laughs> the knowledge that you've learned in all your years. <laughs> yes, yeah, I, just, I, can't, I can't wait. And Tina Fumo is um, a grandmother waiting to hold her newborn grandchild. Oh, I'm sorry, I read the book. Sorry, Tina. <laughs> I'm gonna, That's okay. I'm going to go into your file. bio first. Um, Tina's oh, okay. the first My born. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. I was just going to hold the book up so that oh. people can see the book bio and then you so read the book bio first. First, I'll hold the book up, and then that way everyone can see the book. And then when you read my bio, I'll pop my face out again. Okay, so you hold the book up. Okay, and yeah, then we'll okay. roll. Um, an instinctual pull as time as old as time. A grandmother wanting to hold her newborn grandchild pulls reader into an unbelievable ordeal. Author Tina Fumo travels to a small Canadian town and finds herself in the most stressful ordeal of her life. The authorities have apprehended her two-week-old grandbaby and what her and her family go through to get their baby back will absolutely shock you. Her book, Fancy Prison, will surely make you cry. Maybe even laugh, but no mistake, what you find out in the end will absolutely shock you. <laughs> uh, I need to buy this immediately, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tita is the firstborn child of Italian immigrants. Her home growing up was busy, loud, and had the best meals known to mankind. Though Italian, Italian was her first language, she became an A student all through grammar, high, and eventually continuing her schooling at a university in Toronto. She moved west, then spent the bulk of her life in Banff. Ban, 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 
BAMP. Oh, sorry. You never heard of BAMP? Oh, I've never goodness. heard of BAMP. Oh, See, I'm oh, learning stuff goodness. already. We're um, going to have to educate you about uh, that. Yeah. I guess you both have to come back. I feel like we're going to just not run out of time. Um, where she became a mom, raised her child, and worked for 30 years. After living for a few years with the empty nest, Tina met her future husband and moved to Edmonton. Though not the biological grandfather of Tina's newborn grandchild, her husband bonded with the baby in his own way. Whereas Tina and her daughter experienced an emotional roller coaster of trauma and joy when dealing with MF MCFD, Ministry of Child and Family Development. It was their, her husband who was the rock through it all and made the decision to re return to BC to face the social workers in court. So welcome Tina to Friday Night Feels. Welcome, welcome, Patrick. Welcome, Julie. Well, it's nice to meet you too, Julie and Patrick. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I know like it's one of those things where when you're doing a podcast, I was saying to Julie and, and Tina when we started is you never really know what's going to happen. It's sort of like dating. Like you just go for the blind date and you're like, all right, I have an escape route. I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> get the get the escape text okay no, get I, oh here. there's an emergency <laughs> the house is on fire i don't know like oh the podcast system is going down oh. but you know one of the one of the you know of doing something a little different of having people from such different backgrounds is is when i was reading their stories uh the the one word that i walked away was with inspirational and I think what, uh, and you can both share with me your experiences, is someone had made the suggestion to start addressing issues of people from 50 and above of what, what it's like when you're in this new stage of your life of whether you're looking at retirement or you're retired or you're not working, um, whether your kids are grown and gone, all of these different issues of, and I, and I know in Tina, your, your bio talks about being the empty nester. And learning, oh, when you get to a certain age, it doesn't mean your life is over. It just means it's a time for transition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can't think of two people who I'm getting to know that embody that anymore. So who would like to jump in and kind of share your adventures of, of how you got to where you are today? No, oh, I, I can. Um, yeah, as, as you said in my bio, you know, I... I'll tell you, I worked in corporate more than 25 years. So, you know, um, <laughs> the, in the field I was in was about 25 years. Wow. Um, and um, yeah, I, I had gone to a professional, no, excuse me, a personal development conference. And that was where I was sitting in an audience of about 7,000 other women who were all getting all hyped up and woo, woo kind of a thing. And that's when I got the notification that I was not getting that job that I had applied for. And while they're all hooting and hollering, I am in tears just thinking, oh. I have to go back. Oh. <laughs> so um, yeah, so it, this, this um, conference had a Facebook group. I kind of mentioned something in that Facebook group. And when somebody said, you know, have you ever thought of starting your own business? I'm like, I'm kind of old for that, aren't I? But no, not really. You know, I hadn't thought mm -hmm. about it. I started just looking around and just found um, a certified virtual expert training group. And, you know, it was just taking things that I had learned and all my jobs and, you know, the tech stuff and, you know, the, the um, maybe customer service and anything like that. And building my business based off of that, that I could take the knowledge that I have gotten over all these years and I can make a business out of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I just, I just went for it and I'm very blessed to have a very supportive husband who is probably tired of hearing me bitching about everything. Every time I got home, <laughs> it was just, <laughs> yes, do it. <laughs> the way men support, right? Like, yeah, we yeah. believe in you. Just do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> so but it's scary I started, right I, I mean I, I think at any is. age it's terrifying to start a business yes right yes. you know and especially you know you're used to getting you know insurance and a steady paycheck and you know all the things and it mm -hmm. was just like I think it just got to the point of I'm not getting any younger and is money really everything and it's not you know I just 
I'm happier than I've been in a really long time. And, you know, it's different owning your own business and it's not good. I'm not going to tell you that it's easy because it's not, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's way more rewarding, you know, when Mm -hmm. something works and you have the perfect client or whatever, you know, it's just, it's so rewarding and Mm -hmm. so happy that I did this. And and it sounds like it's successful. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, two years, that's amazing. Yeah, it's been a couple of years and I'm just, you know, it's, it's getting to a really good point. I've, you know, niched down to what I want to do for, for my business. And it's, it's been a good thing. That's amazing. And it's interesting. You brought up a couple of times, the phrase of, uh, you know, am I too old for this or being told that you're too old for this? And how do you, how did you work through that? Because that's a really powerful statement that people say to two individuals without thinking how damaging it can be and almost as, a, as an insult instead of mm-hmm. what you both said at the beginning of I, I've lived I, I have wisdom I have experience that is invaluable that you can't get until you've gone through it mm-hmm. 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 Right. How, exactly. did you, how did you find yourself like maneuvering that and not letting that be a deterrent I think with the coaches that I've had and just and, and then focusing on, okay, what is it that you're good at? What do you know? What do you, what have you gained from all this experience and realizing that, yeah, I have all this, all this experience and I can use this. It's, it was just, it was, I, and I think it was just easy, easier to transition because I wasn't working for somebody else. I was working on the process of working for myself and on myself and, I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I work with coaches still, and I will work for coaches as long as I have to, because um, the, I think everybody needs to have a coach mm-hmm. and um, they help when you have those mental gremlin issues, because, you know, you, that you get those I start chirping in the back of your head. But um, I, I owe a lot to coaches that I've worked with that have helped me through a bunch of different, you know, mindset issues. Mm-hmm. And also, like you, as you said, you had supportive people who didn't let the naysayers stop you. Right. And and Tina, what have your experiences been to lead you to where you are today? Oh, gee, Um, I guess the, the, uh, I guess just being an avid reader all of my life. So I guess when you hit, you know, plus 50, it gets to the point where I really couldn't count how many books I've read in my life. And at some point, like I used to, people always used to say to me growing up, oh, you should write a book. You should write a book just because of the experience I was going through. I had kind of a colorful background with, you know, my loud, busy Italian family and then moving to Banff, which, you know, is a beautiful place in Alberta. You're going to have to look that up. It's a very popular tourist. (laughs) On my list. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, yeah, anyway, so for years, people would say, oh, you got to write a book. You got to write a book. So finally, in my 50s, I wrote the book, but the book is not at all what I thought it was going to be. It was an experience that ended up blindsiding um, me and my daughter when we had to deal with this system in British Columbia shortly after the baby was born. And so one thing that you said, Julie, was like your, I think the pride in your business was that pride of ownership. And I know in our case, with our ordeal, it was the pride of being a mom. It was the pride of like, well, ownership, like this family belongs to me, this baby belongs to us. And so that, that pride of ownership, that um, of being a mom and then a grandmother is definitely some strength and resilience that we had I had I had to tap into you know and and not allowing them to dismiss me because of my age or you or your grandmother you're you're not an option yeah actually I kind of am an option maybe not in the way that you're thinking because I think I think how you know you're wanting to control the narrative is very different than the picture I have in my mind of what my family I I have the capacity of knowing what my daughter, you know, what kind of a mom she's going to be because she had me as a role model, you know, so it's just, it's very complicated. I mean, I, I do take a, 
I do take a topic that people probably don't understand and they probably, they don't really want to talk about it, um, about child protective systems and foster care systems, but I take it and I tell a story in a way that's pretty easy for anybody to read. And in the bio, it, like it is, it's quite shocking at the end of it because, you know, all I ask readers to do when they're reading my book is, Number one, just imagine, imagine if this was your kid, imagine mm -hmm. if the behavior of these social workers, if that was your child who belonged to you. And then at the end of the book, like I don't, I don't go in and sort of insert my opinions and everyone, I just sort of state the facts, tell the story. And at the end of the uh, book, I ask, you know, I kind of ask readers, come to your own conclusions. Like, does any of this make any sense? Mm. Does any of this sound like it's in the best interest of the child? Because I don't just talk about our story and, and me as a grandmother and ours, but I also talk about other stories with moms that I saw in court and, and whatnot. So yeah, it's, it, it was, it was a book that was really, um, I put my really put my heart and soul and wisdom and knowledge into it, you know, and it just, I mean, I, I had a voice, so I got to, I got to write it all out and say what That's I needed amazing. to say. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's, yeah. it's interesting, you know, in my own experiences of when you have that voice inside, when you have that story, when you have that gift, <clears throat> how much opposition you come across. Mm. Mm -hmm. And whether it's because, you know, your gender or your age or, you know, um, you know, all of these different obstacles that, and you're just trying to say, I'm just trying to be me. I'm mm -hmm. not trying mm -hmm. to like win over you or beat you. I'm just trying to express myself. And also, as you're both saying, I'm just trying to be free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yes. yeah. and you both sound you know that you have been able to overcome those obstacles not only overcome them but you're also able to transform them into into healthy adaptive productive businesses but also getting involved in the podcast world to share your stories with other people and you know when, yeah. when I reached yeah. out and we started connecting um you know do you feel that this population is is ignored in in the world that if you're 50 and above it's kind of like all right we set you out to see w what would you like people to know more of that we need to do more as a as a community to improve our our awareness our communication um getting rid of those stigmas and those biases because if you hit a certain age you're no longer viable what would what do you want people to know hmm. That's an interesting question, especially because of COVID. I think that before COVID, I would often, some of the young people I worked with would laugh at, would laugh at me because of my inability to figure out technology. It's like, well, here's a phone, you know, you pick it up, you, you talk to someone like, what's, you know, what's all these gadgets and everything. But now with COVID, we've had to learn a little bit more about Zooming and, and being able to um, connect this way, like online. So those, you know, those people may have laughed at me then, but it's like, okay, fine. Now I've kind of figured it, figured this out. Who's the better conversationalist though? <laughs> because, <laughs> because I'm going to say it's me. Okay. So you might've won on the tech savvy, but you know, somebody my age I can't be easily dismissed because I think I can hold a subject and I can hold a conversation a little right. bit better than 20 year olds and I think now it's gotten worse because of COVID because they're so isolated now yes. and they're all just they were already sort of in their techie little worlds and now I think that's just gotten worse now but there's anyway, more of a just, dependence on that instead yeah, of that, interacting yeah that's just my tongue-in-cheek uh, take on it but yeah I don't know how you feel Julie because you're obviously more techie than I <laughs> with what you do yeah <laughs> I think that surprises some people too you know that oh she does know mm -hmm. the, this you know mm -hmm. she does know the tech she can keep up with all this and um I and I like to think that it's a comfort to my clients to know that you know they've got somebody who's not going to be dinking around or whatever they got somebody who's going to be mature and do the job and mm -hmm. you know take their their business their what, what I need to do for their business serious mm 
Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, I think too, obviously, you know, females and over 50, I mean, we kind of got a double whammy. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> you know, um, I just, I don't know. I, I, I just feel like, um, I, I felt like I had to incorporate at least prove a lot that didn't, that led me nowhere. You know, I, I was trying to um, get a different position and, and, and that didn't happen. I even tried to get a different position within the same, you know, business and that didn't happen. They brought somebody in younger and thought, I don't mm. know if they thought they, they were going to be able to do a better job. And apparently she's not doing that job anymore, but you know, it was, it, that was kind of like my breaking point of they brought her in to oversee me and then it became, I felt micromanaged and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh no, I've been doing this a lot longer mm-hmm. than you. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's, you, and that's quite humiliating. Yeah. It is, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. For sure. Um, so yeah, I, I just. Well, and it's also dehuman dehumanizes you as if like newer is always better instead of mm-hmm. looking at, at a community, especially in an organization of we all have different strengths. Mm-hmm. Uh, but mm-hmm. I, I think the the ageism that we see of, you know, what first of all, we don't talk about getting old. We don't talk about getting older in a healthy way. We don't talk about getting older with pride and love. You know, if you walk down, you know, as a man, even I see this as, well, you don't, you know, wrinkle cream and color in your hair and all these different things that, you know, women have been bombarded with a lot longer than men. But I think now in 2022, everyone's seeing it of like, you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to age. And if you age <laughs> and show it, you're failing. Yeah. And, right, right. Yeah. And it's, and I, I think you know, when I was younger, you know, I fell into that of like, oh, I'm so excited. I can go faster. I can do this. Uh, but then you get older and you stop being dumb. <laughs> 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 and, you know, I've always had uh, the majority of my friends are usually older. So I've always had people to look up to. And, and you know, as I continue to get older of learning how important that relationship is like you know I don't want to say necessarily elders that's just the first word that coming to me but people who are older than me because I can work with them and learn from them and then they can learn together with me of different strengths instead of it being such a separation Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, And, uh, and I don't know if you work with people like you obviously get it where you have, you need to listen in order to learn from somebody else. But I just find a lot of times the younger generation, they're, they're more caught up with, you know, where did you go to get your nails done or your hair extensions and how much did you pay for them? And just, this is just really stuff that I, I like, I'm sorry, I don't really care. Okay, So, you know, if you want, if you think it's important for me to listen to this, then guess what, I think it's kind of important for you to listen to perhaps a little bit of parenting advice, or just, you know, maybe career advice or self respect advice, you know, it's just, yeah. <laughs> and do you do either of you ever see that in you know, I, I hear that complaint a lot when people go from parents to grandparents, that sometimes the adult children forget that their parents have done it. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Or that they've I had a career or yeah, took care yeah. of that or raised that. <laughs> but it's... I. I think my daughter does that, but it's in the most loving, protective way. And I think it's probably because of the ordeal that she went through that she's just uber sensitive when she got her baby back like that's her baby and then and so I have to kind of remind her you know I did raise you okay <laughs> like because she's just so protective of her baby right and that and I, I I don't know if that will ever go away again because of what um she had gone through and what she went through to get custody of her baby back but in a way it's there and it's quite endearing and but we'll just have to be aware of it but yeah I have to always remind her you know uh, I did raise you okay <laughs> um, I, you know I think we even got, went through that ourselves you know I think mm-hmm. anybody growing up kind of got to a point of oh they were right <laughs> 
you know, and yes, you just love yes. it. I think you just love it when you you hear your kids say that yes. <laughs> about you. Oh, you know, you do know what you're talking about. You know, <laughs> sometimes yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. and sometimes no is the biggest demonstration of of love, right? And yeah. you know, yeah. saying I, no is because I want to keep you safe, and I'm trying to teach yeah. you and stuff. Like yeah. That. Unlike you, I wasn't just talking to hear the sound of my own voice. I was actually trying to impart some knowledge here, you know, so you have to listen. <laughs> you can't talk and listen at the same time. <laughs> and so how do you, in both of your fields, uh, professionally, have you seen age been a, an obstacle or a benefit to what you're doing now? Oh, it's an obstacle. I thought that maybe getting older, people would recognize and respect age and wisdom and that could translate into money no not at all it, I think it's just as much of a struggle now as it was in my 20s when I was a single mom and trying to make ends meet like it's just I, I don't have the answers for it but it's frustrating like for sure you know not to be not to be financially compensated um not even so much like the job here's the job description i know i can do the job description so fill that job it's like it, it's like what value can i contribute and what value am i worth to you it's not a matter of whether or not i can do this job it's a matter of what i can contribute to the overall organization and of doing this job and then bringing my character and my values and and so much more with it yeah so that i find that frustrating okay. mm. And as far as my concern is, um, the the training I went through were with people who were around my age, or was honestly trained by somebody who was older. You know, who's been through this and has said, you know, there's age is just a number. You know, you're just it's doesn't matter how old you are, you can do this. So it helped to go through the process and know that there are people who are around my age or older who are also doing this and succeeding in it. And, you know, I, and I think it just depends on, on, you know, where I'm talking about entrepreneurship and I, I, I network with a bunch of people in my age range who are, who are entrepreneurs, who are new entrepreneurs even. And, and I think a lot of, a lot of us have, you know, since COVID especially, have decided that, you know, we don't want to work for somebody else anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to work for ourselves. We want to make a difference and we're not making a difference in corporate. We're making a difference to the CEO's paycheck, but not to our lives and what matters to us. Mm -hmm. So I, I am surrounded by a lot of, you know, same age entrepreneurs who it's, it's just been a great, you know, community to be a part of. That's so amazing. Where, how does that come into creation? Because I don't know if anything like that exists where I live, that type of community. Uh, well, the community is online. It's just, just the people that I've networked with and, mm -hmm. you know, getting introduced to, and then it, you just find out that you're just kind of all got the same, you know, um, you, either serving the same kind of clients or just even in the same realm of entrepreneurship and just trying to, you know, while you're a sole pursuer or an entrepreneur and you're, you know, you kind of feel like you're at by yourself and on your own, but you're not, you just surround yourself with the people who are going through it with, at the same time or, or have done it before and can kind of lead you down that path. Do not screw up the way they did or whatever, you know? So mm -hmm. um, it's just, I mean, online networking has been so beneficial just to, to, you know, meet different people and get their perspective on different things and get to meet people in their network. And it's just, um, it, it has changed my business and it has changed how I work and I network weekly. I have one-on-ones with people throughout, you know, the week, every week. Um, it's just, um, it's just a great way to get out there. And, and since we have Zoom and the ability to do this all virtually, it's just been so helpful. Right. That's amazing. You don't have to do it <laughs> it, and it's so, what advice would maybe both of you have? Because technology has come up a lot tonight. Is I've known mm -hmm. a lot of people who there is, 
they're intelligent and they can get it, but there's a belief system that, oh, I can't do this. Uh, I can't learn Facebook. I can't learn how to Zoom. I can't, you know, do any of this. Almost a, a resistant because I don't want to, or or it's difficult. How how would you guide them to say, hey, you're you're missing out here, and it's okay that you don't want to, but maybe it's it's you might it might be worth it. What would you say to them? Um, you know, I'll I'll be honest that I've kind of gotten a away from from Facebook and Instagram for my business and gone more towards LinkedIn to be where, where, where the business people are, you know, where mm-hmm. I can find the coaches and whatever that I want to work with. Um, I don't know. I, 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 it's hard for me to answer that. I mean, cause I am techie and for me, it's, it's easy to pick something up and just do it, right. you know? So I, I don't know. That might be more of a Tina question. Like how, you know, <laughs> Well, I would answer that again. I have to probably go uh, back prior to COVID because COVID's just changed everything um, mm-hmm. in so many ways. Like I lost my job, and and I like I I'm too much of a people person to want to continue being isolated. But so when I apply, if I applied for jobs to get back into the work phase, workforce. And then I look at a job and again, I go through like, you know, the duties here, there and everything. And then invariably it always asks for some tech thing that I have no idea what they're talking about. And I'm like, well, can't tech be learned? I mean, like, like, you know, you turn on the computer, it's, isn't it just a form of um, communication, like a telephone? So I can learn this, can I? But it seems to be more, it's in the prerequisites rather than the ability to learn, Mm. which I think is a skill in and of itself, rather than knowing that particular software or that particular, for them, of course, it's like, they want to hire someone to do that job. But then there's so much more that comes with filling a position rather than just the you know, that, one that techie part of, yeah, that techie part of it. So like, again, I, I don't know if that's the frustration that I've experienced since in my fifties because of that lack of, lack of technology. Um, but yeah, I just noticed that in a lot of job ads, it's, mm. it's, it really diminishes your sense of, you know, value as a human being rather than, you know, I'm not a robot. Like I can't, like I can't, I can't learn this, you know, I don't have to plug in the techie part and just away I go kind of thing. But anyway. <laughs> well, it, and that also must just kind of help you both to say, well, I'm glad I'm working for myself now. It, and, you know, some people have that option and some people haven't created that or they may not want to. But I, I like having this type of discussion because it helps us to see, like for me, where I can grow and where I can learn. And down the road, if I, you know, expand my business and hire people, different things that I would want to take in consideration because I haven't lived it yet. Mm-hmm. And I, I think sometimes there's a hesitation or a fear to acknowledge that we haven't lived a like, I, I mean, I, I don't know if you've experienced that ever, but it's like, hey, it's okay that I'm not in my 50s because I'm not in my 50s. And, mm-hmm. you know, so maybe that's a discussion of what would you like to do with this and, and open that door instead of it being so rigid, but also respecting, mm-hmm. as we were saying, <clears throat> maybe it doesn't fit the box perfectly, but maybe that's the opportunity to change the box. Yeah, change the box. So I like I'm just going to clarify something that you said there, Patrick, like I don't work for myself. I'm not oh. self employed. I okay, when sorry. when we went through well, I lost like I, uh, I made a choice back in 2017, when we were going through this uh, ordeal, that my family was more important. So whatever job I would have had, I just I would have walked away from it anyway. And I think that was something that they were trying to exploit the fact that oh, she Grammy can't stay very long, she's got to get back for her job. And that's Mm. what they were trying to find out for me. I can't explain it, you'd have to sort of go read the book. And then you gotta read the book. Don't give it away. Yeah, in this in the storyline, you'd understand it more. But so after this whole ordeal, because I would not let my granddaughter out of my sight for six months, just because of the court orders. And when I started getting back into the workforce again, I had to really just start rebuilding again. And I took 
um, a job fundraising and going door to door. So for a woman in her fifties walking from door to door, I mean, mm. <laughs> it was definitely, you know, definitely a learning curve. Now, since then, my boss has given me more responsibilities because he could see I was the type of person who could handle it. But then COVID just happened and then back to square one again. So no, I don't work for myself. And the oh, reason okay. why, the reason why I wrote the book was because we had all this downtime during COVID last year. But trying to get back into the workforce now, uh, like I, I again, I, th I think I would probably be faced with the same challenges that I had prior to COVID. It's like, you know, I might, uh, I've got the, I've got the wisdom, I can feel the job, but I can't seem to get that techie part of it, you know. <laughs> and well, invariably, now, you now you're just gonna have to connect with Julie and hire her as a coach. And she can just speak in your Bluetooth and tell you what to, I mean, no one will watch this, no one will know. <laughs> Yeah, well, the yeah, the problem with that is have no money, okay? So yeah, <laughs> pretty much. We will get you pretty there. much whatever. Listen, no, because whatever. I have a vision. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we're going to spread the word about the book, and then we're going to make it into a movie. Oh, okay. And, oh, there, there you go. That is dream big, okay. right? I have there a vision. There you go. Yeah, Patrick. Yeah, if that happens, then yep, yeah, Judy, Julie, ding, ding, ding. You've got yourself a. <laughs> It's all about networking, right? Friday night. Yeah. Yeah. What, do, what, do, what do movie screenplays uh, pay these days? My goodness. Mm. Your Netflix maybe, will pay, maybe. I, yeah, well, I'm thinking Brad Pitt, but anyway, if I turn my thing around, you can see my Brad Pitt wall. But I'm sure <laughs> he would engage. Uh, I'm sure he would yeah. want to. <laughs> One yeah. of these days, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and it, it's it's interesting as we're talking. Um, when I was preparing for tonight, I, I was just thinking about like when I, what influences I've seen that have talked about aging. And this might seem really lame, but I, um, I remember being younger and watching the movie Fried Green Tomatoes. Mm. And I just remember watching it and it always, I always just found it so beautiful how Kathy Bates's character felt pushed to shy you know like she she raised mm. the kids and then like her husband was just like well do what you want you know there was no relationship there and then she meets this elderly woman who really inspires her um the and helps, whisper yeah. yes and it helps her to yeah, come alive yeah, again yeah, i mean my yeah. favorite part is when she like rams into the other car and <laughs> says i'm older i have better insurance but <laughs> insurance yeah that just yeah, might be my inner road rage yeah it's it's a brilliant movie but her character arc in that movie of course for a show like this with over 50s i mean that's a prime example of and she's dealing with her weight issues too and then during the the movie she's got, going to the gym more and she's challenging her roles as a wife you know having having the meat and potatoes for her husband every day ready you know she's eating carrot sticks and whatever so yeah it's it's a it's a very well done movie i quite like I've it i've never yeah. wanted to buy a sledgehammer more like when she breaks <laughs> down the walls <laughs> i'm not a handy guy so i'm like i don't even know what i'm gonna do but i just want to break down walls <laughs> yeah and now I do yeah, have I just, work where I try to break it down, uh, you know, either mental health or coaching or whatever I just, it might be. I, I just imagine my husband's reaction. If I came, if I got mad that someone took my parking spot and tried to explain to my husband when I got home, like why the car is totaled, okay, <laughs> dealing with the insurance on that. Yeah, I have you can a, say, I have It was a, Friday Night Feels. Yeah, I'm a yeah, podcaster yeah. now. It's what we do. <laughs> it's all Patrick's fault. He, he, he was a bad, he was a bad influence. On that me. would not, that would not even be the worst thing that I've been blamed for. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm okay. I got big shoulders. I can handle it. <laughs> and you know the other program that i watch and, and some of my friends know this is i've i always loved golden girls and the, for the so many the show the show or yeah. was there a movie before the show no just the, the show the, the tv the tv yes. show yeah but it talks about exactly what we're talking about even though it was in the 80s and and it taught me when i was younger it, just in the back of my mind of once again when i get older 
I might have some of these fears, like, because I think the show really talked about a lot of things that I've seen from, from people that I've known of, of I'm older, what do I do if I lose my partner or my children or losing my job? How do I start over? How do I move? How do I find fulfillment? How do I, um, you know, what if my relationship with my children isn't healthy and it's not healthy to have them in my life? How do I recreate mm -hmm. myself? How do I reinvent myself? I don't know mm -hmm. if, if, if what your thoughts are on any of that or any shows maybe that you've watched that you see has maybe touched upon something that you've experienced in your in your lives. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't really remember all the episodes of Golden Girls. I, I mean, I guess it's our ode to Betty White right now because she was a you know prominent uh, uh, one of the Golden Girl gals there. But yeah, I don't know. I can't really think of any TV shows. You, Julie? No, I no. I'm racking my brain on them. It's, it's like pop quiz Friday Night Feels. I didn't prep you. Like yeah, this is could, raw. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah, gonna get I cursed guess, after this. Like I'm yeah. never going on a show again. Yeah. <laughs> Jail no, here, no, 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 no. This background. No, I. I think, hey, any show that I get to talk, mention Brad Pitt, hey, like already it's A plus for me. But I mean, if you want to keep it on the, like a bit of a Hollywood theme here, I wonder about actors when they age and they, sometimes they talk about this in interviews that as actors, there's always seems to be that line that they cross where they're acting and playing a character and then all of a sudden they're getting older and then all of a sudden they ca they're being cast maybe as the parent of you know somebody or a grandparent and then they're like yeah that's that's the line that we cross in acting you know so <laughs> we don't want you know anyway yeah they have different takes on it so as, as far as Hollywood seems to go yeah <laughs> right. Julie do you any movies or anything that you I mean or you can check I mean if it's not your genre um I mean I I, I can't think of it right now that you know you're talking about the ageism or anything like that but um hmm. no yeah no no pop quizzes on a Friday night for crying I'm out loud sorry. Patrick I, <laughs> I should put a disclaimer I just added to the list of sins like I ruined <laughs> Tina's car uh, the marriage is probably going to be on the rocks now. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, hey, it was nothing worse than what MCFD put us through. Trust me, Patrick. Uh, this is this is a cakewalk. Okay. <laughs> so, if if I if you don't mind me asking, what made you both decide to get into podcast or or to you know put yourself out there? I always find that really interesting. What because it's such a leap for some people. It was for me. I mean, I still feel like. I don't know what I'm doing half the time, but that's okay. <laughs> I put it out there. Well, that was encouraging to tell us now. No, um. <laughs> Listen, filter free. No backseas, no returns. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Gee, how many people are watching? Uh, what I do? Do? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be on the YouTube. And then, and then it goes on to play. <laughs> Oh, my God. I mean, for, for me, I just wanted to, you know, I, it's, it's part of wanting to get my, my story out and, you know, promote myself, promote what I do for work. And, um, and just the idea of this was just kind of cool just to be able to talk about, you know, over 50 and starting over, you know, basically. So, you know, that, that's what attracted me to want to do this one. Yeah, I um, I it was a, I guess the same as Julie. I wanted to uh, talk about my book and kind of promote it. But when I when I was talking with a fellow author, so she had written a book about her dealings with the child protective system and family courts in the states. She actually had a podcast, and I like I basically told her, you know, well, I mentioned you in my book, and I don't even think I finished the sentence, and she asked me to be a guest on her podcast, and I'm like, oh, uh, oh, okay, I'm not sure how to do it, but she's like, yeah, there's no problem. So she sent me the Zoom link, and I'm like, oh, so I click there, and oh, my picture comes up, and we talk, and we talk. 
okay, I guess I could do this. Now, you know, that being said, I did try to get a little bit better at it because I think that first podcast, I talked for like an hour, which is not what I want to do, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, just it just seems to be when I mention or when I uh, apply or, or contact people like I did with you, Patrick, as soon as I say I've written a book, podcasters just immediately go oh she's got enough content for a show kind of thing so then and then we that, that's what we build the theme around that show you know and, and then you get on and you're like i'm really not in a talkative mood <laughs> and you're just like uh i need some fillers quick <laughs> trivia i, I won't pull up I, I prefer I prefer the Q and A uh, format for sure. Yeah, I, I prefer the host asking me questions and responding to it because I don't want to have to prepare a speech. Like that's, I want the conversation. I want to be asked questions. Yeah, yeah. Because there's nothing there's nothing a podcaster can can't ask me about our deal that I can't answer. And if I'm speculating, then I tell them like I'm and, speculating. Or you can just make but, it up. I but, mean, who knows? Like, I mean, I, well, no, I could I be making yeah, this but, all up right now and you would never know. Sure. <laughs> sure. Again, one, two, pretend <laughs> audience, you know. <laughs> it's wild Friday night feels tonight. Fans of the <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, are we counting you, Patrick? Oh, I, oh wait, well, wait, I have three wait. marshmallow men before me, too. So I don't know. Like, oh, oh, plus the three dudes <laughs> yeah. behind you there? <laughs> well, you know what? That is one of the reasons, you know, and I, I always just love asking people, you know, because you know i had always heard about podcasts but then I, I didn't ever get into them and it, it there wasn't ever a reason i honestly didn't know how to i thought it was something that you mm -hmm. I, I never knew how easy it was and then i started mm -hmm. friday night feels and it was just a video show and then someone said why don't you put it on the you know the podcast platform and i just researched it and learned how to do it um and one of the things I think for myself when I created this was to help me deal with the incredible loss after everything was going on with COVID, because I just remember the, I guess the loss is the only best word of just like everything was shut down. There weren't any answers. There wasn't really any guidance. I remember when uh, I took my dog for a walk, I was on one side and there was another person walking their dog and we both stopped smiled and waved at each other and it was like the first other human interaction other than me in my home and it it, it was the closest thing to a mm -hmm. hug that I'd had in such a long time and mm -hmm. it, it was interesting for me to learn how much I needed that human interaction because I had never lost it right I never I never lost it and being able to do you know a podcast every two weeks and have the freedom to have people on who have such vast experiences that I can hopefully maybe learn from them or they can learn from me or, you know, being able to share your stories of how people can contact Julie for her business and read Tina's story. I think in our world is one of the benefits of, of everything that's happened of turning, you know, the lemons into to lemonade of seeing, I, I'm meeting people like like yourselves that I never would have met before. I never would have. Yeah. I would have known. Yeah, yeah. People can adapt for sure. Yeah, we, we yeah. we're humans. We can adapt. Yeah, I'm just looking for a sentence in my book here. Since you since you met, mentioned hugs, so uh, you guys talk talk between talk yourselves here yourself. i'm just gonna you talk about yourselves so yeah, let me wondering. so as you're looking for the book julie i was just wondering how could people um find your business and and being able to connect with you is that something you know that you would like to chat about for a minute sure um well I, you mentioned my business name is called tackle your to do and that is my website as well tackle your to do.com um i'm on linkedin just as julie trombley um I just, I offer, like I said, entreport support. And then I also offer where I can help um, coaches get their lead magnet out on their website. Like if they have an idea of what they want for their lead magnet, I don't help create the lead magnet or the emails that follow, but I do all the tech stuff in the back that make everything all work for them. So they could start working on building their email list. Oh, um, so, okay. Awesome. Yeah. 
So, and, and, you know, talking about the tech stuff and whatever, when I quit and started this, you know, at first it was like, I came from um, an association world. And I thought when I started, I want to support associations. And I'm like, why? That's what drove you crazy. So <laughs> I flipped the switch and then just kind of offered all over random tech. And then I had gotten certified um, through Entreport and I was like, all right, that's it. Got a niche down and just focus on that. But I like the whole idea of building the lead magnets, which don't have to be done in Entreport. That could be in any of the email platforms and any of the website builders or anything like that. So um, I, I, you know, I've just found what I love to do and I am, you know, having success with it and it's just been great. That's amazing. And I'm sure your husband is so supportive and he, he can support you. <laughs> yeah, he does. And he is, he's very supportive. It's, it's wonderful. Very blessed. <laughs> That's amazing. So if anyone wants to connect with her, she can, you can find her. And then um, if anyone, I always say, if anyone um, ever wants to reach out to any of the guests, you can always contact me and I'll connect you as well. Um, so, you know, sometimes it's just easier to have that little connection. Yeah. Appreciate that. Sure. Tina, did you find the piece you were? I, I did. Yeah. You mentioned that, that experience with the sort of dog, dog walking hug. So the, uh, there's a line in my book uh, about uh, meeting this mom who had the worst possible experience. And I remembered the words of the longtime friend, in Banff, ironically, we were just saying before, I had a long conversation with her earlier this afternoon. So I re remembered the words of my friend. She said, whoever initiates the hug has to let go first. Mm -hmm. I let Jamie hug me as long as she wanted. So that's the rules of hugs. When we start getting out of this pandemic, it's that whoever initiates the hug has to let go first, okay? Mm. So all the grandkids out there, when they're, your grandparents see you, you have to let them hug you as long as possible, okay? <laughs> That's awesome. That's so beautiful, thank you. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's interesting, that just kind of reminds me is, you know, when I work with parents, I don't know if, if you've experienced this or, you know, anyone, you you know, the, the parent guilt. I see it a lot with mom guilt. It's like, I, I wanna have a career, I wanna do this. But that means taking time away from the family and the kids. And, you know, I always have that conversation of you're teaching, you're doing something that betters you and betters your family and you're creating a healthy family dynamic. But one of the things um, that I always try to point home is your kids aren't going to remember all of the flashy stuff. They're going to remember mm -hmm when you're there at bedtime, they're going to remember when you made those cookies or when you bought the cookies or when, you know, you did the construction programs together. And mm -hmm. I, I think sometimes that we put so much pressure and expectations on ourselves that we lose that human connection to ourselves, mm -hmm. to our family. And the, the other piece that was going through my mind during our conversation was different cultures where family and age is more respected instead of disrespected as we're seeing it in a lot of areas where, you know, the families live together longer and that's not seen, that's seen as loving, not shameful as, mm -hmm. as the family unit is a, a really healthy foundation. Yeah. That was very prominent in my culture, Italian, because there was always this respect given to elders and, and it was just, it, it just, that was the values that was, um, given to us as children when we were growing up and I mean it's there like it's part of my past but I don't I guess I don't really see it so much in this especially now in this segregated sort of COVID world because look what's happening to seniors in the homes and they're like uh, petri dishes of, of covid infestation where they're dying and they're so much more vulnerable to the uh, effects of covid so yeah it's just because that was my past it's kind of a time capsule mm -hmm. of it. it again you have to sort of adjust and keep it in 
perspective with the culture that we live in now for sure right. yeah. well i think when we're working on your movie we're going to be working on uh, julie <laughs> julie's going to create a whole education program for seniors <laughs> to be like this, 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 I, I have visions i have visions yeah. <laughs> and, and you know one of the things too as you both have talked about one of the things that i've seen in my area and this is pre-covid as well was there were a lot of places that were offering classes for seniors and it, it was so cool to see because of people I know who are older who, how do you use a cell phone? How do you, you know, different <laughs> things like that. How do you, um, uh, one of the things too, and, and this is interesting that I recently learned about how to keep yourself safe from scams. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember mm -hmm. there was an article a while ago and I, I remember thinking to myself, why why does this happen how does this like how does the scam work and then all of a sudden I received a call myself and it was they were brilliant at it and I remember mm -hmm. I got yeah. like, luckily nothing bad happened but I was talking to friends about it and and they were able to teach me this is how people are scammed and I remember sitting there feeling such empathy and compassion for all the people who who don't you know who don't know who get taken advantage of so all those different components of being able to have classes to teach <laughs> yes you can go online and you can do it safely yes you can build a network yes you can do this and just because you're at a certain age doesn't mean you're out of your prime Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, one tip that I used to because I would get asked that question a fair bit when I was doing door to door fundraising. Um, and one tip I would tell people is that look at if someone comes to your door and they're explaining this, you know, story about, you know, why they're collecting money, if they can't take a check, a personal check made directly out to the name of that charity, or if they don't have um, like a debit or a credit card, one of those mobile machines that prints up a receipt for you, oh. then, then those, like those are two quick ways of checking it. So if they get testy about not being able to accept a check made directly out to the charity or um, provide a receipt like from a machine or whatever, then, you know, like you just ask quite like you have the right to ask questions and there a lot of times they can be very persuasive or pushy but you know i mean in the end at the end of the day it's your money and it's your right. home you know right. yes. so but uh, i think a lot of people were quite they were quite uh, satisfied with that explanation That's because really the helpful. charities i yeah well the charities i worked for of course they were legitimate so mm -hmm. we would exact do exactly that we could accept checks in the name of the charity right. and we could provide a receipt when they paid for it on debit or credit card yeah so awesome. mm -hmm. that's just a little that's just a little tip thank you so much i appreciate that i'll yeah. pass it along i think i think the scams that are quite persuasive though are the ones over the phone yeah and, i had the yeah. one i had was uh, they were brilliant yeah i mean luckily brilliant. it wasn't anything like yeah. i it, it didn't happen, but I, I had to process it for a, a while after. Mm -hmm. And and imagine if you don't hear as well, or you know, they're they they speak so fast, they manipulate the vulnerabilities, and they get confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So just one of those things. So as mm -hmm. we wind down, once again, I just want to thank you both so much for coming tonight to Friday Night Feels. And as we leave, I was wondering if each one of you could share kind of like one piece of advice or one thing that you would like the audience to leave with tonight? It's not a pop oh, well, question, so you can't get it wrong. Well, it's well, not a pop I question, because I watched and I knew what you were going to ask. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to I'm going to use up my time to, because you didn't ask me how to link up oh, to the book. Sorry, so I, I, was, I was just no, thinking no, that, no, Tina. No, you okay. get two points. No, Go okay. ahead. Yeah, no, that's how can okay. we link I'll, up with I'll, you? Uh, how uh, so just google fancy prison by tina fumo but be specific and put my name in there because if you google just fancy prison you're going to end up with like country club prisons with you know white collar criminals oh. doing that kind of you know crime that's not what my book is about my book is called fancy prison calling bs on the child welfare industry so google that fancy prison by tina fumo f-u-m-o and it will have the link to Amazon where you can buy the book. It will have, uh, I have a LinkedIn profile too, Julie. I quite like 
LinkedIn. So you can message me on there and it will link back to this, well, this Facebook live or this, uh, you're going to have it on YouTube, Patrick, or yes. like back to podcasts like this. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. And what is one yeah. piece of advice, Tina, that you would share? Oh, okay. Um, go to go to Julie because I have to think about that now. Okay, I'll be back. <laughs> two, two part. <laughs> um, so uh, just that age is just a number that you have experienced, what you've experienced for your life, throughout your life, that has taught you just the different things that, that you can use to move forward, you know, that you can... Um, you can use those experiences to create new experiences and create a business for yourself. Um, you know, and just life is too short to be miserable. Just try something new, just get out there and go for it. I mean, you know, you're, if, if you're not, you're not failing, you're not trying. Mm -hmm. So just do it. Awesome. Well, Thank you so probably, much. I shouldn't have said that. That's somebody's slogan. Uh, slogan but. <laughs> well, we're working on it. Well, just <laughs> blame me. Blame me. It's okay. Patrick told me to do it. <laughs> and Tina, what, what's one piece of advice you'd like to share with the audience? Oh, I think, I think my advice, I'm going to steer away from my book right now, but this has to do with getting into your 50s. So if I could go back and tell my smart aleck self in my 20s who thought oh I'm never going to get old blah 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 walk every day use your legs keep be try to remain physically fit especially your legs because you're going to need them for a long time you're going to be walking on them for a long time so it's really important to um, engage your core muscles and, and, and walk as much as possible because when you're in your 20s, it's easy to think, oh, yeah, I'm going to be like this forever. You're not. Okay. Like, I just, I really hate to tell you that. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Keeping it real. Thank yeah. you, Tina. I appreciate yeah. that. That's yeah. <laughs> really good advice from both of you. And once again, thank you so much for coming. And thank you for everyone who's watching or who listened to the podcast. I hope uh, we just got slammed with snow this week. So I hope everyone's safe and enjoying the, the winter. I, I think spring is like 50 days away. So hold I, tight. I'm <laughs> I'm Canadian. Patrick. Oh, that's right. We, we're, we're, we got this covered. Yeah. Yes, okay. No it. problem. Yeah. All right. Everyone have a wonderful <laughs> night and stay safe. Have a All good right. weekend, everyone. Okay. okay. Thank you.